It was a murder that involved a Hollywood actress, one of the greatest musicians that America has ever produced, and a mystery that took almost 12 years, two court trials, and three legal appeals to resolve. On February 2nd, 2003, Phil Spector, the man behind the Beatles album Let It Be, John Lennon's Imagine, George Harrison's My Sweet Lord, and countless other topic music hits, left his Los Angeles mansion. He came back at midnight with a gorgeous blonde actress, Lana Clarkson. They got drunk. He played the piano. They sang. But at two o'clock in the morning, there was a single gunshot that echoed out over the neighborhood. And then Phil Spector stepped out of the door and said, I think I just shot her. Or did he? Because when the man known as America's modern day Sherlock Holmes began to investigate, it was not so clear. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Crime Waves. My name is Declan Hill. I'm an associate professor of investigations at the University of New Haven. And each week, myself and my students, and this week it's Brigitte Harston and Alexia Miller, we present an episode of one of the great investigators of crime. And this week, it's a master class. It's literally a class given by a master, a world-class expert who's at the very top of the field of crime scenes investigations. They call Dr. Henry C. Lee the Sherlock Holmes of America, and his is an extraordinary story. He was a police detective from Taiwan who arrived in the United States with $50 in his pocket, and he got his PhD with this wild idea. He was going to marry the newly formed scientific study of DNA with detection, and they called him crazy. Now, of course, it's the method of solving crimes at virtually every police force in the world. But Dr. Lee pioneered it. He lectures around the world in Italy, Singapore, China, the UK, and many other places. But he also founded the college where we work, I work, at the Henry C. Lee College of Criminology and Forensic Science here at the University of New Haven. And this is a lecture that he gave me and my students on that Phil Spector case. It's a little different from our usual Crime Waves format because it's literally an online lecture from a master detective on the work that he did on this case. And two warnings. It will feature some pretty gruesome crime scene uh, photos. So please be aware of that and don't obviously let children see it. Uh, two, when we did the interview, uh, he, Dr. Lee was in his forensic laboratory and the sound is terrible. We didn't realize it at this time, but you can hear various lab sounds and technical problems. However, we think this episode is so good, we're airing it as a video, and we hope you can struggle through this bad sound quality because the content is extraordinary. And now, Dr. Henry C. Lee. So tell us about February the 3rd, 2003, and the murder case that you got involved with with who with a man who'd be known as the greatest music producer in the 20th century phil Spector. okay uh that's a good question all my life you must get a lot of cases and uh one of the cases i will never forget is this case you probably heard january 16 this year the news inform us Phil Spector died in the prison because of COVID-19. Yes. You know the history. I don't want to repeat. I, I'm not sure that all our listeners will know Phil, who Phil Spector was because he was such a giant in the 1960s and 60s and 70s. So could you tell us a little bit about him, please? Yes, uh, you are absolutely correct. Uh, in 19... Uh, 69, he's a record producer. He did a lot of uh, uh, interesting taping, also develop uh, uh, knowledge. One of the things, he did all of the song. So the music become like a 3D. And uh, he recorded a song for John Lennon's, uh, Harry Nelson, Tina Turner, uh, Rolling Stone, of course, Beatles. 
make him uh, so famous. But uh, um, unfortunately, uh, in the peak of his career, some tragedy happened. One day, his son, uh, seven years old, had a birthday party. Unfortunately, uh, drowned in the swimming pool. Since then, uh, he uh, started using alcohols and gradually drugs and uh, being in an now detox center. Um, on February 2nd, 2003, uh, she, Lana Clark, that time, the victim of this crime, uh, was working in this uh, bar, House of Blue. Somehow, Phil Spector uh, that I was eating in a different restaurant. The young witches really treat her, uh, Phil Spector so good. And uh, it's $30 dinner. He give a $500 tip. So the young lady requests her, uh, request him, um, try to go to House of Blue to meet some other uh, Hollywood characters. So once they get there, House of Blue, so the music was playing and uh, Phil Spector meet uh, uh, some other people, then he went to Mansion. So, Wonder Clark come over um, threw the young lady out of the bar, say the idea is fake. When Phil Spector back to the table, talk to him, say, uh, I keep you company. Uh, that's somehow one thing lead to another. Uh, they went to uh, his house. He lived uh, in a castle. Early hour of the morning, the driver hear a gunship. According to him, he saw Phil Spector uh, come out the back door with a gun and say, I think I shot him. But Phil Spector denied he did say that. Police was called right away. This castle become a when they enter the back entry area from London Clark's body, uh, she died of a single gunshot in the mouth. They notice there are a couple of hangar in this drawer. Also, they found a hanger next to her head. Initially, they classify as an accidental death, but subsequently, the you must have the case that based on a, a limo driver's statement. They changed to a homicide. That night, they mobilized 107 detectives, police officer, coroner's office, medical examiner, searched the crime scene. The crime scene area 
just a small entrance, five feet by five feet. Phil Spector was arrested and booked a uh, charge for homicide. His lawyer, Bob Shapiro, right away contact myself and Dr. Bobbitt, ask for our assistance. So we'll flow to Los Angeles police and and dr lee let, let's just i just want to take a step back so you were contacted within the first 24 hours of lana clarkson being killed or, or lana clarkson being found dead <clears throat> and what were your thoughts when you got that phone call which we usually because uh that time uh, already uh as you know i start my career uh 1960, as a police captain in Taiwan. And yes. Day five, I come to the United States. I work at the NYU Medical Center. Then I subsequently get my doctor degree in molecular biology. That 1975, I joined University of New Haven uh, as a professor. Um, 1978, joined state police as their uh, laboratory forensic laboratory director. So after serve. The state police 25 years ago, first time, then uh, uh, governor appointed me as the commissioner. Then uh, in year 2000, I retired again, uh, become chief emeritus. That time we took a lot of a uh, consulting case because University of New Heaven, we want to build a uh, forensic program. So need the extra funding. So all of those cases, uh, consultation money they usually donate to University New Haven or Connecticut State Police Forensic Lab. Um, uh, this is a one of the case I accept as a consultant case. Okay. Um, one one note, Doctor Lee, we're hearing something in the background of the sound. Is there is there another machine going on in in your office? So apparently, so many machines going on, so many things going on. Uh, I don't know. Let's let's see. Uh, okay, no, don't don't, uh, don't fool with the um, with this because it's very very interesting. I just wanted to check if there was something really obvious going on in the background, but that's fine. Yeah, the the, the institute have a lot of instruments going on. Not a problem. I understand it's a forensic laboratory, so we'll we'll live with that. So you get a phone call. You're in New Haven at the University of New Haven, and you're asked to fly across the country to examine this crime scene. So please tell us what you found when when you got there. Well, we flew flew the as you know, it's not the short distance driving, and uh, so we flew the red eye. Got there. Got to the uh, first thing, uh, the lawyer picked us up. We went to the hospital. That time, you know, Phil Spector already bailed out. So Dr. Bodden and myself check uh, to see any injury because if uh, uh, Phil Spector longer Clark had a bite or as the police uh, serialized he tried to uh, have sex with uh, London Clark and uh, she refused and uh, that's how the tragedy happened. We should have some, found some injury. Uh, in addition, we want to look at uh, his hand and his scratches in a gunpowder residue or blood spatter. We also want to check his clothing and uh, his face, we, which we did not upon any uh, obvious injury. Okay, so the next scene, of course, we uh, carefully check, we found one little scratch. Uh, uh, apparently, uh, when police handcuffed me, 
cause that injury. Um, so uh, later was verified that's due to the police arrest. Uh, they handcuffed his hand. The next thing, we they took us to his castle and uh, to check the crime scene. So we enter from the front door and uh, he have a wall of testimony and uh, all those uh, famous musicians and uh, citations. And that's the piano. Uh, she apparently, Ronald Clark, and uh, he was play piano and sing. According to Phil Spector, they left the uh, House of Blue. She took a bottle of uh, tequila. Two of them went to his house. They drank the whole bottle, which we was able to verify. Then they start singing. Uh, he played piano by two o'clock. He said, I'm too tired, I want to sleep. And he, my driver will take you home. And uh, he's, you know, the, uh, this is his living room, middle of the night. Uh, some of the investigator, this is a Los Angeles detective and a couple of people have been pizza. And uh, we look at the crime scene, of course, by the time when I get there, uh, her body already removed, the chair already she sat down, already removed, pocketbook done, and all the weapon, everything removed. The only thing is a you know, blood stain on the carpet. So Dr. Bowden and me, we start working uh, at the scene. When I look at the carpet, I notice a couple of white threads white collar threat. So it's foreign to the blood stand, to the carpet. So anything foreign to the scene, we should collect and preserve. So I collect those material, took the note, and uh, seize that, labeled, sealed in a plastic evidence bag, well, I want to give it to the uh, Los Angeles police. They don't want it. Prosecutor doesn't want it. Defense attorney doesn't want it. So nobody wants it. And uh, as a good forensic scientist, I kept it and uh, logged in. The carpet was cut and seized of this evidence. So the case, of course, First thing have to determine that's a homicide, suicide, or accidental death. We can eliminate the natural cause. So is this homicide? Become an issue. With forensic one on one, we all know when you discharge a firearm, you're going to have a GSR. Gunshot residue is combustion reaction of uh, you trigger, pull the trigger, then you'll have a trace element. Those elements consist of umber and bars, partial burn powder, primer residue, lubricant, barrel residue, transfer and projectile material. So there are two methods to collect. One, use a atomic absorption swab. The second one was a SEM, scanning electron microscope disc. Under SEM, that's what the gunshot residue looks like. Usually consists of bearing antimony and uh, lead particles. So usually we collect the palm area. We check the uh, Los Angeles Medical Examiner's office uh, record, they did collect uh, Lunder Clark and Phil Spector's uh, hand sample. They also uh, put some notes, uh, shows a minor injury of a Lunder Clark's hand and some uh, other material. So 
based on that, the initial lady say this is a accidental death, but the sub subsequently become harmful. Usually, you fire a shot into your mouth, 99% of the time is self-inflicted, suicide. And uh, usually create an injury inside of uh, your intraoral cavity. And uh, trajectory usually slightly goes up and uh, no sure usually because the gun barrel stick inside the mouth, you have no external injury. And uh, uh, so based on those, those are the funding result, which are knowledge generally that's caused by a self-inflicted wound. So based on medical examiner's uh, document and photograph and uh, the inside the mouse injury, we checked their own record that initially they mark questionable accident to accident or suicide. And they marked the accident. So in other words, the initial determination is an accidental death. How that later become a homicide. In addition, uh, they found toxicological report of a minor hydrocodone also uh, 0.04 alcohol concentration. So in other words, she is complete disoriented with that amount of alcohol. She is drunk. Based on our study and other research study, when you commit suicide, many times the bullet penetrate, but a lot of time is stopped. So if a penetration, you're going to have a lot of the, the forward spatter, but if without this uh, penetration, then uh, all the spider tissue will blow back, deposit on the shooter's head or sleeve or closing, of course, the weapon. Dr. Bottom, Dr. DeMille, Dr. Rudd, and uh, everybody agree. We look at uh, this scenario based on collective uh, experience. We think this is uh, most likely a accidental death or an accidental. Hey, it's Declan uh, here. I just want to thank you so much for listening to Dr. Henry C. Lee explaining the Phil Spector case. Um, we've been working on it quite hard, myself and the two producers, that's Brigitte Hairston and Alexia Miller. We want to apologize. We know the sound quality is not very good. We put in subtitles as well. But really, Dr. Henry C. Lee is the master pioneer of this field in terms of linking DNA with crime scene investigation. Uh, he had, as you can tell from this podcast, primary access to this crime scene and his perspective is amazing. So thank you again for listening. Uh, and again, we apologize for the sound quality. Forensic Science 301, we always teach students, check the blood spatter, evidence on the hand. So people commit suicide usually have a blood spatter and a blowback. On her hand, unfortunately, they did not take a very good picture at the scene. Autopsy picture did not find anything, but uh, uh, did not, uh, we did not have any close-up autopsy picture, except this field. You can see some blood there, and uh, at the scene, you can see some blood spider, small blood spider. 
So the weapon is covered with blood. As you can see this picture. So uh, not only that, we also have a tissue uh, fragment, bone fragment deposit all over the weapon. Here is a close up shows a monobla. So this is the weapon used by her and uh, prosecution uh, Los Angeles laboratory own result show gunpowder residue on those weapons on her hand and her clothing. Because every time you shot fire, uh, you create a lot of energy, not much energy. So the target area, in other words, also can form gunpowder residue and uh, the shooter's head, anything escaped from the cylinder gap can deposit on the shooter's head. So we did uh, numerous experiments before, and uh, so that's why we want to verify her closing. When we re -exam, I re examined her closing, we found uh, material, but at the same time, we check field specters, uh, white cocktail uh, jacket. We did find some uh, few spot of blood, but not blood spatter. They are just transferred blood spot. And uh, the most important is the sleep. We did not see any high velocity blood spatter. If According to the prosecution theory, he fired a shot. Should have a lot of listening. Meanwhile, when I look at the, her closing, I found a tremendous amount of listening and uh, also on the uh, sleeve area, on the, uh, besides the large amount of tissue material found on, uh, near the bottom near of the sleeve cake in there. So with that, we look at uh, our past cases, the experience, uh, this tremendous energy should have a lot of blood. Uh, we did a uh, numerous experiment with uh, different police, as you can see, the blue back uh, at the University of New Haven. We run a lot of this uh, Gansha uh, reconstruction courses. Um, many of our students, many FBI agents, uh, New York police, uh, police from Singapore, from different places come to New Haven to learn how to reconstruct. Uh, as a matter of fact, give me one minute commercial, the 44th annual Marco Homicide Symposium will be the November uh, December 11th, the, to the topic for this year going to investigation of uh, police involving shooting case. So I hope uh, two of you, I can see you either in the class or in virtual, we give scholarship and uh, uh, share the information with other faculty and students. It's a once a lifetime experience uh, should take this advantage when you're in school. So we check all the her clothing to see the bra and the panty. If a forcible uh, rape, maybe have a torn panty holes or clothing. We even check uh, uh, her eyelashes and everything. We did not find any, any uh, foreign DNA and uh, no blood stain under her fingernail, no tissue under her fingernail. When we rechecked the crime scene, we found a couple uh, high velocity blood spatter on the wall, on the railing area. So that consistent with our 
reconstruction, the shell fire. So you have some blood there. The yellow one represent little tube tissue material from the staircase. The blue one was found by Los Angeles crime scene people. The white, those are additional one we found after they released the scene. So, which is consistent blowback if somebody in between, you know, for example, Phil Spector fired a gun, he should intercept all those spatter. The most of the spatter is on the carpet because carpet is red, also the construction of the carpet, very difficult to farm. And uh, that's why we cut the portion of the carpet to look at that. So everything tell us that the crime scene is consistent with a accidental uh, death or suicide. Uh, those are the scientific funding, uh, DNA, everything. Meanwhile, uh, Lonner Clark found uh, all those uh, indication, uh, no blood, no DNA, yet she was fighting back and uh, should have uh, some DNA. The only thing we found is she have a fake nail and uh, her thumb, uh, left thumb, uh, artificial fingernail have a chip. So of course that become a, a, a pretty interesting thing because when we look at the picture, we found it the prosecution did not put anything in their record, including the medical examiner. And uh, of course, there are some tiny blood stain, which on her hand, uh, whether or not have more blood stain, which we don't know, because the, this is the only picture, crunchy picture, shows her hand. So we issue our report, basically highlight our funding I just share with everybody. Um, so we have a reasonable doubt uh, because uh, all those uh, results we found. And uh, prosecution, meanwhile, use uh, limo driver's testimony, Phil Spector's violent temper, Phil Spector, alcohol drug bills and uh, playgrounds, those are nothing directly related to this crime. It's not forensic evidence. So the first trial, which basically uh, become a show, and uh, of course the hair become important Unfortunately, today, the lawyer, they cannot discredit the science, they discredit, discredit the scientists, and then they twist the fact they mean the scientists. So you initially have four experts to testify, but they disqualify Dr. Wack because he appeared on court TV, discussed the case before the trial. At the standard of start of the trial, this fingernail become an issue. So have a special hearing. The first person they put on the stand, the LA detective, but by that time they are retired. So at the direct, he say, I look at it with my flashlight, I saw a fingernail, no big deal. You see them all the time at the murder scene. I saw that said piece of meat. Uh, it is a fingernail. I believe it's a fingernail. He continues to say it's 16 inch thick. It was red, uh, also from ridges. like a lap on the fingernail. So he basically 
say a red fingernail and a uh, lead on it. At the cross, they ask, how did you see it? You are in the dining room eating. He said, I look at it with magnifying glass. So defense attorney, what is your magnifying glass? He said, my eyeglasses is, is my magnifier. Uh, say red fingernail polish, you just saw, everybody saw her fake fingernail. Is that red? Hey, three of you, did you see that? No, there was no, uh, there was no red marks on that fingernail. That the half that was still finger. attached to her, her, her finger. Yes, so whatever it was would have been. A so he say it's a red finger. The most bizarre thing is a whole finger. The second witness is a lawyer. Stay put on. He said he saw a white tooth. Dr. Bobbitt took it. Dr. Lee did not take anything. So you think about witness statement. The tooth. Remember, when they ask uh, him more, he want to take a fifth. He doesn't want to testify anymore. Want to take a fifth. The third. Sorry, Doctor Lee. Who is who is the in, who is the witness who wants to take a fifth? Who and and for uh, the listeners, order. that's uh, when they that's when a uh, witness uh, refuses to continue testifying because they may yeah. be indicting themselves. So who is that witness? He is a lawyer. That night was at the scene. He is in a party. He talked to a police officer. He said he saw uh, somebody took a piece of something. And uh, of course, uh, this police officer gave the information to the detective. So he was subpoenaed to testify by prosecutor. Okay. All right. So that's, uh, wait a second. Somehow I lost my, but anyway, since it looks like I lost my son, the third witness testified, he, she also a lawyer. She said she saw, I took something white. And uh, the prosecutor asked him, uh, is a size like a fingernail? She said, yes. So now the prosecutor conclusion say, I took the fingernail. So judge rule say whatever I took have to uh, submit to court as evidence. The newspaper, of course, twist the story now become a, I uh, judge say I hide hiding the evidence. Meanwhile, I was in Italy teaching at the Verona Medical School. They conduct this hearing without me. Then I ever hear my side of story. So when I come back, I give a news conference. I say, over that few years since the uh, death that night to now here, it's four years. In between, I wrote so many letters to everybody say, I have some white thread. I collect it, do you want it? And now uh, all those lawyer respond say, keep it, we don't want it. So before the trial, before the hearing, I packed a sent to FedEx, through FedEx, sent to Los Angeles laboratory. They signed the FedEx report. So I tell judge, 
what I collected uh, here is in Los Angeles Police Department. It's not, I don't have it anymore. So the judge ruled, I'm not contempt of court. Everything is fine. Now, of course, it's not fingernail, it's red. It's a couple of white thread. How many newspaper apologize are correct? Only two on page 40, little tiny thing. The rest of it just still think I took the finger. So this is an example shows keep a good record. If I did not keep a good record, they probably think I have left finger. Of course, during the trial, fingernail never come up, never become evidence. The far first trial become a uh, hung jury. The second trial, I tell the lawyer, I don't want to be participate because nobody want to find out the, the truth. Everybody just try to diminish somebody. Uh, prosecution tried to say fuel factor as a chronic alcoholic and um, bad temper, want to play guns. And uh, defense tried to say Lonner Clark uh, come uh, over the prom, no movie contract, become a bar bouncer. She can't even pay uh, the rent. The last message, email message she sent out, say, if I don't find a mail ticket, I can't, I probably want to kill myself. All those, instead of trying to look at the scientific evidence, that's why I did not participate. The second trial, he was convicted, but uh, on appeal, uh, he died in the prison. Um, so that's the end of a, a sad story. Um, Phil Spector, a musician, a genius in music. Nala Clark, a good movie actress, uh, somehow maybe fake. They don't know each other. They never met before, but that night somehow something happened. It's a great lesson to me. And I'm glad you invite me to talk about this case. Well, I learned so much about this case. So with younger uh, 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 people choosing law enforcement, police or forensic as career, keep a good record. Whatever you do, document. And, uh, some they sometimes maybe protect you. I'm glad what I did kept record. Otherwise, nobody will believe me. They everybody going to think I took a fingernail, even though you saw the picture, just a fake fingernail, a little break. Initially, they want to say Lana Clark tried to defend herself, Phil Spector used a gun. So when defending herself, the gun projector took a piece of fingernail out. And, and Dr. Lee, what, I think the thing that I, I find most interesting is the the difference between the, sci the science of the crime scene investigation where you're you're taking you know you're taking all this personal stuff away and you're looking at blood splatters you're looking at dna you're looking at the thing that the gun traces the gsr gsr right and then you put it in a very personal gladiatorial and atmosphere of a courtroom where it it behooves the lawyers to attack the prosecution or the defense witnesses personally so there's two completely conflicting cultures there. One is science, and the other one is a kind of soap opera type art. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Absolute, your observations, right on the spot, okay? As a scientist, 
we obligated to give scientific fact to the court, to the jury, relay the fact to them, nothing more. Let them make the decision. But on the other hand, the lawyer want to twist the fact, want to inject personal lifestyle. For example, uh, O.J. Simpson case, a DNA scientist, he got Nobel Prize for event PCR. He testified for defense prosecution. Instead of a focus on DNA, they just ask, uh, when well, you in college, have you ever smoked a marijuana cigarette? Nothing to do with DNA, nothing. Yes. But to ask a question, did you smoke marijuana cigarette? And, I mean, that, that whole O.J. Simpson trial, which you which you were part of, was such a, a soap opera of Hollywood styles. We're, we're speaking in front of two students who, um, and I don't mean this in a patronizing way, you weren't born during the O.J. Simpson trial, but I remember... <laughs> I, I remember our workday stopped. I was up a Canadian journalist and I and 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 the entire building, both the journalists and everybody else, we stopped when that verdict was good to be announced and everybody ran to a television because we barely had internet in those days. I mean, the internet was just beginning. You are right? given the stock market and now yeah. country, office, everybody stopped. Everybody stopped. Now, Dr. Lee, you've been involved in these high profile law cases, you know, for 20, 30, 40 years now. Is this case with the Phil Spector, was that the worst one you've seen? Where they? Uh, one of the worst ones. Uh, now, of course, later, uh, I often uh, tell the public, let that evidence speak for itself. I'm a scientist. I'm not getting involved in pissing contests. I just give you the fact. Whatever the jury judge make a decision, nothing I can do about it. And uh, history will prove everything. History later did prove. Of course, a lot of people now agree Phil Spector just become a scapegoat. Because Phil Spector, he goes to court, not because he really want to wear wigs. People think he's weirdo, wear all kind of different wigs, different color. Yes. Because he have a cancer or something, he lost all the hair. He was on radiation. He doesn't have hairs. And, uh, so he put that wig, look younger. Uh, by the way, he is one year younger than me. Yeah. And uh, just over the year, wear him up. So that's why you have to have a healthy living style. Don't drink excessively, don't use drugs. And, uh, but this case taught me a great lesson. Uh, this case also taught prosecutor the lesson he lost the election. And uh, also later, he started investigation, uh, a lot of uh, uh, um, unfortunate police misconduct involving cases. And uh, eventually, fact will come out. But I'm glad I did thorough documentation, protect my reputation and the integrity of the forensic evidence. That's why the uh, high profile case, a lot of people think uh, I enjoyed it, I don't. Uh, I really don't look for them. They come to look for me. That's why I'm so glad I retired five times.
Dr. Lee, thank you very much for sharing your time with myself and my students today. This has been a master class in forensic science. We really hope you'll come back and speak about some of your other cases with us. Sure, sure. More than happy. Thank you for reminding me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this episode of Crime Waves. It was a master class with Dr. Henry C. Lee on the Phil Spector Lana Clarkson crime scene investigation. If you liked it and or if you like the podcast in general, please follow us on social media. It's super important. And in the meantime, stay tuned for the next episode of Crime Waves 